Dave, you spoke after the Mansfield game about the need to, to rest and, and reset mentally, probably as much as physically. Do you feel like you've been able to do that? Um, the players have. Um, whether I ever sort of rest and reset is di di difficult because you have to move on. But we gave him a couple of days off the Mansfield game, worked hard for a couple of days, then had the weekend off. Um, and I suppose reflected on what we've done the first part of the season, celebrated and, and emphasised the, the good stuff and looked at where we can uh, improve in the areas we need to get better. Um, and at the weekend to sort of go over it and, and, and it was more a case of come back in Monday morning with a sole focus on achieving our objectives for this season and I'd like to say hopefully we, we've done that um, and we'll get through what this month brings um, and naturally we'll only get stronger as the season goes on. You spoke about focusing on the, the areas where you can improve in the second half of the season. What what are they? Um I think you can always I think you can always improve. Um I think you look at um what we did in the first bit of the season in terms of the, our our squad makeup allowing us to play in a different a different way. Um we've probably had to go more back to where we were towards the back end on and towards last season, which again isn't the worst thing because we were relatively successful. We were a penalty kick away from being a League One club. Um, but if you look, and, and there's quite a lot to go into in terms of what you can look at, but if you look at you look at set pieces, where we sit within within the table, for and against, is there improvement to be had there? Absolutely. We're a team that crossed the ball an awful lot. Um, if you look at where we rank, though, in terms of what that has turned into, in terms of efforts and, 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 and stuff, then... I think we could be better. Now, some of that comes down to delivery. Um, some of that comes down to bodies that you have in the, in the box. I think our, our quality in the in the final third hasn't been as good as, as what we'd have hoped for in in the recent past, shall we say. Um, so there's bits where we can improve there. And ultimately, if we're going to finish where we want to finish, which is in ideally finish top of the league, then... You have to be top in most of those categories in order to allow yourself to do that. Now, we are in and around, in and around the top, as you would expect for the team that's got the points we, we've got. But there's always things you can get better at. And that's where our focus has to be, whilst also, like I say, celebrating the, the, good, things that, the good things that have happened in the first part of the season, because there's plenty of them as well. I'll get the, the question about injuries out of the way now. Um, obviously, you lost Ethan and Kyle in the last game against Mansfield. What, what is the latest on those two? Um, yeah, obviously lost both of them in the game. Ethan, high ankle sprain, um, eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. Um, probably going to be the start of March before before we see him again at the earliest. Normally a little bit more, more difficult, so obviously a horrible clash of, clash of heads and um, quite a, a sort of scary moment in terms of him going off the pitch. Thankfully, when he went off the pitch, he was conscious, but um, as a consequence, there was obviously a concussion there, as it had a, a fracture or broke his nose and has a fracture in or a small fracture in his cheekbone. That's not the again, daft this sound, not the be all and end all. Um he'd be able to play in he'd be able to play now with, with a with a mask on if those were the, the problems, but the concussion <coughs> excuse me, side of things is the bit that's the bit's the issue and the unpredictable nature of that because you are a case of um, we're still waiting on the final results of an, an, another MRI scan, um, but in terms of what he can do, he's been given the all clear to, to go on a bike today, um, but you're reactive off, off his symptoms, if any symptoms come back up regarding um, or linked to concussion, then you have to sort of ease off and step back. So it's a, a process that's going to take some time. The, the frustrating factor is we've no idea how much time it could be a week, it could be a month. Um, so there's unpredictability there. You've been in football a, a long time now. Have you ever known a situation quite like this in terms of the injuries, not just the volume of injuries, but the, the length of time players are being ruled out for as well? No, I've never, I, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Say my time of playing, I'm managing, um, and I, I think we're always going to be professional and look for reasons. For, for injuries, but when you really break things down, at the moment we're sat with two muscle injuries, two significant muscle injuries, and if you're being really critical, you, you would maybe look at it and go, oh, can you preempt them? Can you sort of do things to reduce them? Well, I, I know we can't because the two absolute freak ones in terms of Will and, and Louis being 
grade four see hamstrings will not require any surgery will be requiring surgery every other injury apart from that where we are currently we've with two ACLs, we have an LCL, we have an MCL, we have a broken foot, we have a concussion, we have a high ankle sprain. They're all impact injuries um, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. We play in a, a game that unfortunately requires you to, to train and play at a level and there are variables involved. This is a, a variable that you can't control and um, that's something, listen, unfortunately we have to we have to get on with it and, and, and it's not going to, like I say, it's not going to change in the, in the in the short term, certainly. There's there's bright shoots in the fact that you see Miles joining today in his first full training session, so he's not too far away. Maka back on the grass, Sars back on the grass, um, probably maybe, maybe two or three weeks away. Will back on the grass, but we have to control. There's no high speed running for him for the first eight weeks, so although he can keep his his cardiovascular fitness up, he won't be able to do any dynamic stuff until um, just after maybe the 20th of, 20th of January, then it's a case of can we, not fast track him by any stretch, but can we get him fit as quickly as possible. So we're, we're back to the point we were early in the season where we had lots and lots of players out and we almost were getting one player back per week. We should have that through uh, end of January, February and March, but it's frustrating having to um, I suppose manage as we are at the moment when we have the positive of the fact that we're inside a, a transfer window so we can try and do things but in every case all those things are out, out of our control um, there aren't any free agents out there that we're looking at, at sign if we're looking to sign it's either going to be on, on loan or on permanent transfers and we're not in control of that situation on the positive side, obviously great to see Odin Bailey, his loan deal, become permanent. That was obviously what you wanted. It was obviously what he wanted. How important was it to, to get that done? Yeah, absolutely. Um, really important. Like I say, I think at times people will go on alone and, and, and one works the other way. In terms of Joe Lewis going out to, to Wimbledon, gone um, and, and played some games and... and, and I suppose kicked into stride in terms of the football. Is the same with, with, with Joe there, and he goes obviously with our, with our best wishes. But that's then allowed us to um, be able to go and, and secure the deal to bring to bring Odin back, which again is something that everybody wanted to wanted to happen. Um, there's certainly a spring in his step. I think he was really, like I say, a great time here during his loan spell. Um, but I think even how positive he was in terms of the group, I think you'll see a. Um, a, a, an uplift in 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 his form because um, th that uncertainty that he maybe did bid, did have for the, the months he was here on, on loan is now now gone and he can um, focus on the long term if you like or the medium to long term and what's required over the course of um, this season for us to ach achieve our our ambitions or objectives and and ultimately beyond that. And on the flip side of that, Connor Evans back in the building now as well, recalled from his loan spell. I suppose that's important to be able to bring someone in that knows you, knows the group, knows what's expected of them straight away. Definitely. Um, like I said, the honest conversation with Connor. Connor had gone out and, and was, was playing football and, and, and was quite rightly, <coughs> excuse me, was quite rightly happy, happy at, at Wimbledon and playing. Um, but our situation dictates that. Um, we need bodies in the building, but we need quality in the building. And for us to be able to go and get a player that was ours, that was out on loan playing somewhere else and, and be able to bring him back, like I say, not only his quality, his adaptability in terms of being able to play in different positions, but also he knows this group, he knows us, he knows how we how we play and how we go about things. Um, and think he can have a real impact between between now and the end of the season. And I've been, like I said, really clear with Connor in terms of in terms of where we're at. If if the situation changes in the next um, three, four weeks, three weeks or or whatever it is, um, and he, I don't feel he's going to have a significant impact on our group. Then we look at that situation. But at the moment, I feel he will. Um, we've not seen we've not seen the best of him by any way, stretch or form. I've told him that he knows that. Um, I really hope that the time he spent away in terms of playing League Two football and, and having having games and having minutes and finding a bit of a groove, if you like, um, will seamlessly transition into him coming back into into our squad and into our team. Um, and hopefully, we'll be proved right on that one. When we last spoke, you, you mentioned the need to to probably bring in 
at least four bodies between now and the end of the January transfer window. Um, I appreciate that situation probably changes as you go in terms of the injuries and as you say, circumstances out of your control. Is that still the aim and, and where are you up to on, on that? Yeah, uh, the, the the situation we have is a, is, a, is a difficult one. It's a frustrating one. Like I said, we've done a lot of work between um, the last window closing and this one opening around where you potentially need to strengthen because you have to look ahead of not just this window, you have to look ahead to, to next season and what that looks like and can you um, bring in business that um, allows you to not be in the I suppose, the hullabaloo of the summer market and what that looks like. Um, and numbers-wise, we we obviously need numbers present uh, and currently because we are squad depth-wise really, really sure. We've... 10 players um, not available for one reason and, and another through injury and obviously it'd be, it'd be being away. Um, we have to get that balance right um, and we're in a situation where we, we have to trade with the players that, that we've got. We can't just go out and, and bring in four or five players and add to the squad that we've already got and, and then look at the situation by, as I've said, through January, February, um, having a Maka, potentially Noily, a Miles, a Sauce, a Will Collar, uh, Ibi back in the back in the, the the building, and I've probably missed people out off that list who are who are currently not uh, not training. Um, so we have to be, like I say, we have to be careful. We have to stick to um, the budget that we that we have. Um, the club will obviously help as much as possible because our ambition is exactly the same. We're in a good position and we want to remain in that position till the end of the season. But we've got to be realistic. Um, and there are things that have happened over the course of this window already that I say out of our control. Where players have gone and made choices to go to, to different clubs, to go to League One clubs. Um, so then you have to look at other other different things. Uh, it's a it's a tough enough window as it is in January. Um, and there are like I say, huge variables involved. We, we need to make sure that this part of the season is, is important for us. Um, these next, this next month, six weeks, um, it is massively important because at the end of that six weeks, you'd hope that we've probably got, like I say, six or seven players in that treatment room and away from the club at the moment that will be added to our squad. And it goes without saying that makes us an awful lot stronger. Just coming back to the, the short term and obviously Saturday's game against Walsall, are you still confident with the, the players that you do have fit and available that they, there's more than enough out there to, to go out and do the job on Saturday? There's definitely more than enough because, as I've said, you look at um, you look at where we are, um, every single player will, will start the game, will tell me they should be starting the game. Um, I think, I think the, the, not, not the issue, our, our depth, we struggle with, we'll struggle with our, our depth and we'll have some young players on, on the bench that don't have the experience of um, of, of League 2 football. Listen, that's not the worst thing in the world. I benefit from that. But we're in a situation and a position at a club where the um, there's pressure to win. Um, there's not just pressure to perform. There's pressure to win and pressure to, to, to get promoted. Um, and throwing young players into that environment can be, can be challenging. Um, and we've got to, like I say, make sure that we do what it takes and it might take different things over the coming weeks to allow us to, for that to happen. But we need to pick up points, we need to pick up wins. Um, and regardless of, like I say, of, of who plays, that we, everybody knows the situation, everybody's clear around what, what, it, what it looks like and when players will potentially be back. Certainly not going to be for the weekend um, and possibly could be... Um, the, the following weekend, but again, we'd hope that another week's passed um, in January and lots can happen in a week in, in January. Um, so whether that's um, bodies coming in that increase them numbers, whether that's bodies coming back that increase them numbers, we want this squad to be as strong as possible. Because, you know, if that's the case, then we have a really good chance of finishing where we want to finish at the end of the season. Appreciate your time, Dave. Thank you. Welcome. Cheers. Thank you.